In this example, you are given the initial concentrations of all species and the equilibrium concentration of one of them. You will learn how to use an ice table or ice chart to find the equilibrium concentrations of all the species and use these to calculate the value of Kq. Given the equilibrium equation 2SO3 gas gives 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas, 10 moles of SO3 gas are placed in a 2 liter container. When equilibrium is established, the concentration of O2 is 0.588 molar. We're asked to calculate the value of Kq for the temperature at which this reaction is done. Notice we're given the moles of SO3 and the volume of the container in liters. In equilibrium calculations, we deal with molar concentrations, or molarity, so we need to change the initial moles of SO3 to the concentration of SO3. Molar concentration equals moles over liters. So the initial concentration of SO3 equals 10 moles divided by 2 liters, which equals 5 molar. We'll make a note of that up here. The words are placed in, or are added to, or are injected into, all refer to what we're starting with, or initial information. When it says equilibrium is established, it means that any quantities given after that are at equilibrium. So a system always starts out as what we call its initial state. Then it will naturally react until it reaches a state of equilibrium. As this is happening, the concentrations of the reactants and products will be changing. When we're given initial quantities in a question, and one or more of the quantities at equilibrium, then we create what we call an ice table or ice chart. We create an ice table like this. We have a vertical column for each species in the reaction plus one more. The first horizontal row goes all the way across and there's three more horizontal rows. We usually draw a thicker line above the last row as shown by the black line here. We write the equation for the reaction on the top line. At this point, it's always good to make sure it's balanced. We line it up so that each species in the reaction clearly has its own vertical column, as shown here. We don't write anything directly above the first vertical column. In the left column of this row, we write capital I in square brackets. I here stands for initial, not for iodine. And square brackets mean molar concentration. So this stands for the initial concentrations of all the species in the equation. Capital C here stands for change in, not for carbon. And of course square brackets mean concentration. So this stands for the changes in concentration of all species as the system moves from its initial state to a state of equilibrium. As you might guess, the capital E with square brackets stands for equilibrium concentrations of all the species. It's really important to fully understand ice tables as they're used a lot in chemistry. In this cell, we write the initial concentration of SO3. We had calculated this near the beginning and it was five molar. So we write five molar in here. Since the square brackets mean that we are dealing with molar concentrations, we can just drop the unit molarity in ice tables. Now some teachers require that you do write the unit M after all concentrations in an ice table, so make sure you're aware of your teacher's wishes and follow them. When we read the question, we see that the 10 moles of SO3 are all that was added to the container initially. Since SO2 wasn't mentioned in the question, we can assume that no SO2 was added initially. So the initial concentration of SO2 is equal to zero. Similarly, O2 wasn't mentioned either, so no O2 is added initially, and its initial concentration is also equal to zero. The question tells us that when equilibrium is established, the concentration of O2 is 0.588 molar. This means the equilibrium concentration of O2 is equal to 0.588 molar. And we write 0.588 in here. Since we know the initial and equilibrium concentration of O2, we can calculate the change in concentration of O2, and we write that here in the cell that represents the change in concentration of O2. Since the concentration of O2 started out as zero and went up to 0.588 at equilibrium, 
we can state that its concentration has increased by 0.588, so we write positive 0.588 in here. In order for the concentration of O2 to increase, the reaction must have proceeded in the forward direction, or we say the reaction has shifted to the right, or moved to the right, as it approached equilibrium. Now here's something very important. In order to determine the changes in concentrations of the other species in the reaction, we must use coefficient ratios in the balanced equation. The coefficients in this equation are 2, 2, and 1. Remember a coefficient of 1 is not written. We know the change in concentration for O2, so we can start from that. First we'll consider the SO2. The coefficient on SO2 is 2, and the coefficient on O2 is 1. This means that as the reaction shifted to the right, there are two moles of SO2 formed for every one mole of O2 that is formed. So the change in concentration of SO2 is 2 times the change in the concentration of O2. Since the reaction shifted to the right and SO2 is a product, its concentration also increases. So the change in concentration of SO2 is positive, and it is 2 over 1, or 2, times 0.588, which is equal to positive 1.176. Now we'll consider the reactant SO3. Its coefficient is also 2, so the coefficient ratio of SO3 to O2 is also 2 to 1. Because the reaction shifts to the right, and SO3 is a reactant, its concentration will decrease as the system approaches equilibrium. The 2 to 1 ratio means that 2 moles of SO3 are consumed for every 1 mole of O2 that is formed. So the change in concentration of SO3 is a decrease or negative value, and its value is 2 over 1 times 0.588. So the change in concentration of SO3 is negative 1.176. So we write negative 1.176 here in the cell for the change in concentration of SO3. At this point, the changes in concentration have been determined for all three species and recorded in the change of concentration row in the table. The equilibrium concentration of a species is calculated by adding the change in concentration to the initial concentration. So the equilibrium concentration of SO2 is 0 plus 1.176, which equals 1.176. So we write 1.176 here in this cell for the equilibrium concentration of SO2. To calculate the equilibrium concentration of SO3, we add 5.00 plus negative 1.176, or we can simply say 5 minus 1.176. Either way, our answer comes out to 3.824 molar. So we write 3.824 here in this cell for the equilibrium concentration of SO3. Now technically, in a subtraction, the answer has the lower number of decimal places of the numbers being subtracted. Since 5.00 has two decimal places, our answer is only precise to two decimal places. So if this was the final answer, it would be rounded to 3.82. However, we'll remember that 3.82 is three significant figures, but we'll still carry the extra digit, the four, in the 3.824 in our calculations. Then when we get to the final answer in the question, we'll round it to three significant figures. We'd also like to point out that all equilibrium concentrations should be positive. There can be negative changes in concentration, but there's no such thing as a negative equilibrium concentration. If you get a negative value for an equilibrium concentration, a mistake must have been made somewhere. Now we have determined the equilibrium concentrations of all the species in this reaction and recorded them here in the E row of the ice table. Remember that any values in this table are concentration values, so they could also be written with the molarity unit M. 
The question asks us to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant kq for this reaction. So we start by writing the kq expression for this reaction. Keq equals products over reactants, or the concentration of SO2 squared times the concentration of O2 over the concentration of SO3 squared. Because Keq means the reaction is at equilibrium, we always substitute equilibrium concentrations into the Keq expressions. We substitute 1.176 in here for the equilibrium concentration of SO2. And the exponent 2 on the concentration of SO2 in the Keq expression reminds us that the 1.176 must be squared. We substitute 0.588 in here for the equilibrium concentration of O2. The Keq expression shows us that the concentration of oxygen is not squared. Finally, we substitute 3.824 in here for the equilibrium concentration of SO3. And the exponent 2 on the concentration of SO3 in the Keq expression reminds us that the 3.824 is squared. Now we calculate the value of Keq by taking 1.176 squared times 0.588 divided by 3.824 squared. And the answer comes out to 0 0.0556. If you look at the given data, you will see that the lowest number of significant figures given is 3. So we express this answer to 3 significant figures, just as it's written. So we can summarize by stating that the KEQ value is 0 0.0556 for the temperature at which the reaction is done. Mm -hmm.